Hello, so I thought I'd just show you how I created these ATCs. This, these won't be identical, the ones I, I create um, this time, but the process is the same. They've, um, they've got quite a grungy background. Uh, there's some book pages, some heat embossing, some doodling some mark making and some stamping and then a, one of my rusty paper clips. There's four in this set and they are all different. They were all, the bases were all created just using this. It's just, um, it's some spare sheets out of a journal that I use. I use a uh, I think it's an 8 by 8 journal uh, from the works. It's just a cheap one and the pages are quite flimsy but by the time I've put all the collaging and mediums on it they end up quite stiff and if I don't take some of the pages out the journals end up <coughs> excuse me, just too bulky. So I always start by taking a few pages out because I love craft cards so I can use it all the time. Um, when I'm creating, doesn't matter whether it's journal pages or 3D projects, whatever it is, and I'm using paint, I don't waste any spare paint. Um, I don't believe in putting it down the drain because it's a plastic and I try to get as much off the brush or roller as I possibly can so that it doesn't actually end up in the, in the, the drains. Um, so I've, I've got a variety of brayers. This is a little seam roller. started out as a, a foam one. The centre is still squidgy. But it's got so much paint on it, it's actually turned into a solid roller. And it's just a little mini one and I quite like it because it, I can get right up to the edges of pages with it. Which you can't with some other brayers because the handle gets in the way. Um, so whenever I've got whether it be this brayer or another one um, and I've got paint left on it I'll use one of these sheets of, of craft card and I'll just brayer it off to get rid of it so that it ends up on paper and not wasted. Um, if I've been, if I've put the paint onto my glass mat at the side and I've brayered off as much as I possibly can get from there then I'll press another sheet onto the wet paint to get the rest up and that starts another another sheet. So this has got, from what I remember, I think it's got a Lindy spray on it because I can see a little bit of a silver glisten. Um, so I've probably put something on there to spray and then it's caught the, the sort of spray that's gone past the the object that I was spraying onto. Um, it looks like heavy cream or it could be white gesso and I know this is cerulean because this is my favourite colour. <laughs> um, it's lovely with rust and it's just it just makes everything pop. Uh, cerulean. That's a paper artsy fresco finish one so I know that's what this turquoise colour is. So that's my start. I'm going to be making hopefully, I think I'll probably get about six ATCs, at least four but possibly six ATCs out of here. So that's the start. I want to add a little bit of metallic and I've got these Lindy Starburst squirts. I got, I won them in a, um, a competition and they're, they're paint but they actually have got, um, I think they've got walnut ink in as well. Just have a look. No, maybe not. Uh, possibly. I can't remember exactly. But they need a good shake up. But the, the paint is not thick. It's sort of the same consistency as their sprays. So I'm just going to squirt a little bit. As you can see, it's quite liquid onto my mat and then I'm going to just pick a bit up on my roller probably 
will end up in patches. So I'll just add it to the to the page. I want it to be quite random. I don't want it to be an overall effect. I think that's about enough. So what I'm going to do now is what I usually do. I'll just move that out of the way to dry for a couple of a few minutes or a few seconds. Get my spare paint, my spare paper, and just dab it into the paint, and it will gather it up, and then we don't waste any. off as well so that also gets it off my brayer I think that's it I don't think we've got any spare left but we've got a nice lot on here so I'll just wipe in case there is any spare little bits left and pop that away Yeah, it needs to dry a little bit, so I'll just give it a quick blast. You can see that the gold comes out more once it's dry. I hope you can see that. I've got a little bit here and it's just very wet, so I'm just going to smudge it down so it spreads it about. And Makes it quicker to dry. dry. And hopefully you'll be able to see the shimmer on that. So that's lovely. It is quite wrinkly is my paper at this point. But I'm not concerned about that because I'm going to flatten it out uh, when I've got the background done. I'm going to get my archival ink pads out now. I think I'll have black and let's see, ground espresso, I think. They're both Ranger archival ink pads. And let's see, which stamp shall we use? <laughs> hmm. That will be quite interesting. It's an all and create one. And it looks like uh, shattered glass. Which is quite interesting. out you can see there I'm gonna quite often I don't use an acrylic stamping block but this time I'm going to because I don't want to have it any bits missing and I think I'm gonna go with the black which is gonna be quite dramatic ink on there and I'm going to be quite random as to where I place it because I'm going to cut these up so I might get the full image, I get, might get part of the image, it doesn't really matter, I'm going to be as I say quite random. Sometimes I don't mind if it goes over the edge. Like that. And we still have some ink still on there, so we'll have that over here somewhere. Yep. I'll go here. Like that. Some ink on here. Yeah, 
So I think that's fairly interesting. I'll just wipe that up and then I don't get it all over my elbows. And put this back onto its carrier sheet. Otherwise they end up with ink absolutely everywhere. Now that's quite interesting, but I think I want some more interest in the background. So I think I'm going to do some map making. I did fancy having some of this brown. Let's see, what stamp shall I use for that? Hmm. Actually, I think I like numbers. I think I'll use this, which is an indigo blue stamp. And I think I'll do that with the um, ground espresso. And again, I'm not bothered if it's perfect. It's just going to be in the background. Just bits and bats. That's just sort of subtle in the background, but it's there. So those two can go away. Now I am going to do some circles. I really, really like circles. This is a piece of, uh, some people call it punchinella, I just call it sequin waste. And I'm just going to go to areas where there isn't much interest and just do a few circles. This is just a fine liner and just a few little bits like this just to have a, add a bit of interest. Just gives you a guide having this. It's just easier than trying to draw an absolute perfect circle. And I can add some of these later if I want added interest anywhere else once I've cut these up. I'm going to turn the video off and cut it up with my paper cutter because you don't need to cut see me cutting with cutting it up with a paper cutter because it's rather cumbersome and doesn't fit on my desk very well so we've got this so far which looks a bit crazy and a bit much really but when it's all cut up it'll have different bits of interest um, and we can do some more stamping and make it a little bit more how we want it so we'll come back in a moment when I've cut it up. Right, so we're back. I've cut it up. I took the top little bit where the uh, the binding was off. And then I've got six ATC sized pieces. I do mine in metric measurements. Uh, nine centimetres by six and a half. Um, I find it easiest to remember and, and my paper cutter's oriented in sort of metric so I find it easier. It's not exactly the measurement it's supposed to be but it's near enough for me. I'm quite happy with all of these because they've all got quite a lot of interesting the the dark sort of broken glass effect. But what I think I'm going to do is I like I think I like to see these in black. So if I see if I can find a, a fine liner, it's got a brush. Let me see, there'll be one somewhere. Yes, that's a, a brush tip fine liner. And I'm going to just fill the centre of these in. 
I think it just makes them look a little bit more dramatic and I like the look of it as if it's a void behind yeah I'm, I'm happy with that it's just quite easy I just sort of fill the centre bits in we've only got one on there this has got two and it might be that this is a different colour black to my archival ink pad when it dries but I think when we've got all the rest of the interest on you won't actually notice that much and I could always go over it a few times to make sure that it looks the same I'll be as quick as I possibly can so this doesn't get too boring Oh, that's got two. That needs to be filled in as well. Yeah, I'm liking these a lot more because it's quite dramatic, is the black. And I think it gives them a bit more impact. It's got two. Oh, this has got three. Sorry, I was just out of shot there, I was realising. These are just cheap fine liners and, and brush pens from uh, the works, our local cheap store. And some of the acrylic paint is showing through. I'm not that bothered about that. I think that's okay. So I want a little bit of a more of an impact. So I've got a reasonable amount of dark. I want some more white. So I'm coming back with my Punchinello. And I'm going to get one of my white fine liner pens. I've got my little black circles which don't show up that much but I'm going to do some white because I think that will just lift it just a little bit yeah I'm just going to dot some of these I'm going to go off the edge of the page yeah So I'm going to do some um, botanicals, as I did with the others, I think. So, like groups of three, and then the odd one or two going off on a, a tangent, sort of off the edge of the page here. And I'm sort of looking at each each piece and thinking, yes, the botanicals will go in a certain place. So I just want a bit of interest elsewhere. So that's where I'm putting the the white little marks. So you can see on this one, the botanical will probably come up here. So I'll probably put some white here and some white here so I've got a bit of interest. My punchinella on an angle. Keep forgetting that I might not be in shot. Yeah, and a couple of little ones up here, I think. I do like to take things off the edge of the page like that I think it just adds interest these being so small I hope you can see from my hands now this one I don't quite know where the 
botanical will go. It might come down there, so we might just have a few circles at this side. Yeah, balances it a bit. And we need some interest up here. This is a, a Signo Uniball gel pen. I love those and Poscas. Posca pens and these, but for white pens, I love these. I use them all the time. I've tried other other makes and I always end up going back to them. Alright, so there. I'm wondering if I want a little bit more dark now. Yes, I think I'll go back to my brush pen and I find it. Yeah. And I'm going to... Oh, now where did I put the black circles on that one? I must have missed that one. But I'm just going to fill in some of these black circles. Just not all of them. I like a little bit of a difference. So you can probably see on this one... I've got some that I filled in, some white ones, and then there's the black areas. And in the background there is obviously the uh, the numbers as well, but they are just sort of background interest. So there's just three that I've drawn here, and I'm just going to fill two of them in and leave the other one just blank just as a, an outline. Same here. I'm going to do two and leave one. Just basically adds more interest. I think that one. Just go with you, what your gut instinct tells you to do. Three on that one. Um, this one, I don't know. I'll just one. Two, three, I think I'll do, maybe four. Yeah, there we are. This one I might do all three because there only is three. And some of these details that you're putting in you will cover over later. It's just one of those things that happens that you do. Mixed media is all about the layers. For some reason I hadn't got any on this one. And it it might be that you cover quite a few of the layers up. It's fine. Absolutely fine. It just adds depth. So again we'll go one, two, I think I'll go on this one that's half off, three, this one up here, there we are, yeah, so that's our backgrounds more or less done I think. I don't always bother whether, when I've got numbers or words in a background, whether they are the right way up or not. These, I've settled with them all, the numbers are the right way up. I'm not bothered if they're, they're not, if they're upside down or whatever, but these have just ended up being the right way up. I'm going back to my white fine liner now, and I'm going to just doodle some botanicals onto each one 
Um, I'll probably speed this up slightly so that you don't get bored. So I'll stop talking and just doodle. There we are. So they've all got doodled leaves and I'm quite pleased with how those look but they need a little bit more impact. Uh, I'm going to do what I did on some of these, well all of these, and I'm going to heat emboss the leaves. I have these pens which I have had for a long time just find the right one and they are oh I can't actually pronounce that they're made in Japan now hopefully you should be able to see that and they are acid-free emboss dual pen and this is chocolate um, they've got a brush tip and a chisel tip some I have a lot of different colors um, I'm using this brown one the chocolate brown one because I'm going to use crusty copper embossing powder so if if I do miss if some of this is dried before I get the embossing powder on it, uh, it won't matter. It'll just show brown. So I'm going to do, I'll do one to show you, which is going to be the quickest one, possibly this one. And then I'll do the same with the others. So I'm just going within the lines of my doodled leaf, leaving the white lines showing. And just filling this in. And because this is basically the same stuff that um, an embossing ink pad has in it, it stops wet. It's basically pigment ink and it stops wet a nice long time so that the embossing powder sticks to it. You can see, probably see that it's shining because it's stopping wet. If I do happen to go over any of the white, it's not a disaster. I can just put it in later. Just remember not to get your fingers onto the wet ink, unless it will transfer everywhere. You can use whichever tip you're happy using. I could have used the chisel tip, but I find the brush tip is easier to use. 
because it goes around the the wavy lines of the doodles. And as you can probably see, I'm going over some of the marks that I've made. But that's not a problem. Let's go down there. Right. Should still be wet. Yeah, I think we've got everything covered. So I'll just show you what I do with this one, but I will do all the others the same. But I won't make you sit through me colouring them all in. So that, my ink is still wet. I've got the Wow Embossing Powder, which is crusty copper inspired by Seth Apter. So I've sprinkled it all over where the wet ink is and then I'm just going to tip it off onto this paper to catch the excess. And you can see it's stuck to everywhere where the ink was wet. I'll get, tip the excess back into the jar. Keep my paper to the side for the next time. Put the lid on. Right, this will be noisy, uh, but I want you to see the reaction. Takes a little while. Here we are. That's going. Try not to burn my fingers. Whoops. bit needs to just go. There we are. So hopefully you should be able to see that that is nice and metallic now. Now there's my white pen. I've just lost a little bit of the white just round here so I'm just going to put it back in again and obviously you don't have to do it in white if your background is paler you could do it in black but the, the basic principle is the same I'm just going where it's not quite as Obvious, I'm just going over it again around the edges. So there we are, that's that one. I think I'm going to add some words, but I'm going to find the right book page words and probably put them in here, or maybe just a stamped word I'll see. But what I do want to do. And as I say, I'll do all the rest the same and then show you when, when they're finished. I've got my ink pad. This is my archi black archival again. Yeah, that's dry. And I'm just going to ink the edges because I think it just needs framing. So I'm just going to go around all the edges and add black ink. So I think that just brings it in a little. I think some words just there would be good. Um, but we'll see. I might actually colour a couple of these white circles in white as well. Just for a little bit more lightness.
Just go with what you think looks good. I think that just lightens it a bit and adds a bit more interest. I think I'll do this one up here as well. And maybe with this one. I like to draw the viewer's eye around the piece. And I think that just adds it, gives it a little bit of transition across. So I think once They've all got their words and their embossing done. They look good. Right, so they're all heat embossed. And as you can hopefully see, they've got a nice metallic shine to the leaves. You can see a little bit of the gold metallic in the background as well from the spray, uh, the paint. Um, and then we've got all the little details as well. I've inked them all with black archi archival around the edge and I think I need some words now and I've got years ago my husband for Christmas bought me the Art Daily set of um, there was a binder there was um, sentiments sentiment stickers there was uh, uh, stamps all sorts of things by um, Finnebar, Prima Finnebar. And I haven't used these very much and I absolutely love them. Uh, but I think you should use the things that you love rather than keeping them for the best project. Um, this, the sentiments come in a range of different colours. They come in this nice, almost like an eggshell bluey green. They do come in cream and white, but I think those are a bit I'm saying that the might the white might be okay. No, it's too it's too brash. So I'm going to find a, a word for each of these. Um let's see, what shall we have? Inspire. I like that. I always like inspire. So, where shall we put this one? I think we'll go there. I am terrible at getting things straight. Do I think that is about... Oh, maybe a little, a little bit. I'll just put them on gently for now and then I, I will glue them on because I never trust the um, the stickiness on stickers. I always like to put them on with PVA as well. Now create. I think that looks would look nice there or there. I think down here give it a bit more balance. So create. Let's see. Hope. That's a nice one. I think that looks nice just at the bottom there. Yeah. So we've got three to go. Uh, dream. Dream's a nice one. Hmm, where should we put I think we'll go there. Dream. So we just need two more. Breathe. That's a good one. Breathe. I think we need something of interest here because that is a bit of a, a blank area. And I know these are all warped with all the heat that we've applied and the moisture. But I am going to glue them to a stronger background. So we need one more. Uh, let's see. Ponder. Um, 
express or ponder? Ponder, I think. I quite like that word. Yeah. And again, we'll go down here. It's almost like the, the cracked glass stamp is giving the focus to the word. It's giving it sort of bringing your eye to the word on those two, on this one. Not so much on that one, but... So there we are. So that's the words, and I like those. I think what I might do is go around the edge with... Right, I've got a 2B pencil. And I'm just going to go around the edge of each word. Hopefully you can see this with my 2B pencil. And then just smudge it out with a Q-tip. If you've got paper stump, paper stump would work just as well. But I like a Q-tip. So that gives it a little bit more, a bit more of a border, makes it look as if it belongs. So I'll do that to the rest, I will we'll glue the words on and then I'll take a picture of them, a close-up picture of them and then you can see all the details. But I hope you've enjoyed that.